Since we're on the topic of shitty school systems, I thought I would share my feelings that were ignited by the hashtag Stop Racism at Pretoria Girls High School. So the first time I heard of the hashtag, it was sometime on the 27th or 28th of August. Um, I think it's best summed up by this Instagram post that reads, Something was shifted in the air today. Something restless. In representation of past, present and future black students of Pretoria High School for Girls, the black ladies spearheaded the cause with their Dukes and Black Panther inspired gear. A new day is dawning with the intention to combat the bigotry and racism we face in our learning and living spaces. Commentary such as no blood was shed for democracy in this country and white people are oppressed in this country can no longer be tolerated. Policing black hair can no longer be tolerated. Calling Dukes headgear can no longer be tolerated. White girls who insist on justifying culture appropriation can no longer be tolerated. Dishing out disciplinary hearings to children for expressing their opinion in English creative essays on white privilege and white woman advantage can no longer be tolerated. This is an urgency in the state of our schools, the nation and the mundane oppression of black bodies and black existence. You will not believe how ecstatic I am that this is happening. You know, not just because people are starting to talk about the racism at Model C schools, but that the people talking about this are the learners and the teenagers. And not just any teenagers, mind you, black women. These black women are being threatened and frightened because they want to wear their natural hair to school. They're being threatened because they want to wear their natural hair with pride. I'm a former girls high girl who has had an effort her entire well, what's it, career at girls high. The system did not allow for black girls to have afros. It wasn't written in the code of conduct, but they tell you that your hair is very untidy and it's not appropriate with the school uniform. You must flatten it somehow and you need to make yourself look presentable. It's understandable if your hair is really now in your face and everything, but if your hair is neatly tied and your afro is neatly tied, why must you be apologetic for being a black African child in South Africa? Why do black girls always receive the shortest end of the stick? These archaic rules, regulations and ideologies are safeguarded and created by people who don't even look like us. How can you as a white governing body member decide what is neat black hair? Alas, it's not just about hair. You know, I used to ask my mom why she never ran for the governing body of the school or went to governing body meetings and she'd just look at me and say, and Danam. Thinking back to it now, she wasn't just saying that she didn't have time. She was saying that she didn't have the privilege. She didn't have the privilege to come back home from work, then leave her family, fill up the car with petrol, drive 30 minutes away to go to school, sit there for about an hour, drive back in the middle of the night. Unfortunately, you know, the fact that she was a black woman in South Africa kept her back from doing all those things. You see, our school systems were never built for the black child. Our schools were built within walking distance from white people. A school that's built in Rondebosch, Newlands and Weinberg was not built for a kid who lives in Google to Kylie Chong just play. It's not just about hair. Oh my god, the way black kids were made to be these demons for arriving late for school after having to walk and take public transport to get to school. Ah, oh, Tando, you were late once again. Um, sorry sir, I just had to wait for the taxis to get full. Well, you should wake up earlier then. My friend, believe me, it's much easier for you to wake up earlier to get into your warm car and go to your rugby matches instead of having to walk to a taxi rank and get into a taxi full of people where the only thing keeping you warm is claustrophobia. It's not just about hair. I come from the second oldest school in the country, 1841. You know, a school with ideologies as old as its walls. With notable old boys including the likes of Hendrik Verwoet. Wikipedia calls him the mastermind behind socially engineering and implementing the racial policies of apartheid. Anyway, not to ruin their reputation, but on my first day of school, January 2001, my teacher asked me, young man, what is your name? And I told her with pride, smooth sea so man. And she looked at me like, oh, maybe Cebu, Cebu, yeah. And I was like, that's, it's not, it's smooth sea. So, okay, Cebu, okay. You know, I came from a school where we were told not to speak black because it was rude. You know, this is an English school. Once by a teacher, I was even told to go back to the trans guy. I'm from Bumalanga. Even as kids, they were threatened by our blackness. Anyway, so much to say, so little time. Um, to end it off, I'd like to say to the black women of Pretoria Girls High School, to those symbols of strength and all things powerful, you're not alone. You are not fighting alone. To the educators, pull up your damn socks. If you're not going to do your job properly, if you're not going to serve and protect those kids, your futures, 
then somebody else is going to have to come and do it for you. It's not just about hair. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Uh, if you want to see more of my videos, click to your right. If you're on your phone, then you can click on the card below. That just comes out now. Otherwise, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me a lot. Um, do let me know your thoughts on the video. And if I've left anything out, please write it down in the comments below. Once again, Pretoria girls, we are with you. Have a good week, everybody. Peace.